Okay, so this is a video game review for Braveheart for the PC. This is... It's a bit of a sad one for me. Because Braveheart is my favourite film of all time. It's just such a cracker. What, Whatever you think of uh, Mel Gibson these days and his personal character, he does make great films. But is this a good game? In short, I've got to be honest and I've got to get straight to the point. It's a pretty resounding no. If you do not like Braveheart, if you do not like 13th century Scottish history, then you may as well just ignore this because there is no way you will ever buy this or play this or want to. If you're interested in the period and if you uh, loved Braveheart, you may look, overlook certain aspects of the game, but it's unlikely you will overlook some of the larger flaws. Now, I can simplify this game into one thing, which is the battles. The battles are terrible. I'm not going to sort of beat around the bush there. It's, uh, they're terrible. They really don't do what they're meant to. and. Uh, that's a shame, as I said, because actually some of the other aspects of the game are really well done, and I'll get into that in a second. Firstly, you start off by picking any of the 16 clans. There's a nice selection, and they tell you a little bit about it. They each have different starting locations. It's easier to start in the north, because that way you don't have the English so close to you at the beginning, and you have you start off with two leaders. The leaders um, are those who you need to send into battle really. If you don't have leaders then, uh, despite having armies, you can't really use them to attack other settlements. In the beginning you'll be quite friendly with the local clans around you, but uh, later on, for unknown reasons, they will turn against you. But at least you can see it, it's clear. It's not like Shogun or Total War games where you don't know what the hell is going on with your neighbours. At least you know who doesn't, who likes you and who doesn't like you. That's a good thing. Now, I will look compare this game a little bit to Shogun, because Shogun was uh, released in uh, 2000, and this was released in 1999, so very, very close to each other, although Shogun clearly is the one that gets remembered, because it was a good game and it had decent battles, but the strategy uh, aspect of Shogun wasn't always that good. Remember the the Risk style uh, battle map, and yep, some of you will have liked it, I personally didn't. This game is far better in my opinion, because the the troops move by day, so you unpause the game, it goes day day by day by day by day, and they make a little bit of progress tottering from, you know, say Stirling to Dundee or wherever. There are so many settlements, however, in this game it's a problem, because it's just too big to take over the whole of Scotland. The idea is that you unite the clans and then you fight the English. Well, the problem is that there's so many settlements, it could take you a long time to play this, and because you can't really play the battles on auto count because you almost always lose, even if you've got like the most elite army in the game, you can't play the game like, you know, there are some people who play Total War games. They don't play the battles, they just uh, move the troops and then they auto count it. Here you can't really play like that, you've really got to play the battles. Um, although on the other hand, when you do fight the battles, and they don't take that long, probably about five to ten minutes, they're really uh, quite short affairs usually because you can only have 150 men on the field when when you f uh, fight those those battles uh, you'll you should really win so long as you've got plenty of archers it's uh, it's easy enough because you, you just stand there shooting arrows at them and they'll just take it basically now this screen all the different screens are fairly well done in the strategy section uh, the problem with armies is that they do tend to get very disloyal very quickly so it's, it's a real problem. You could have like an elite army and you're traveling, if you're sending them a, a long distance, so say, um, if I tried sending, say, an army from Paisley to Aberdeen, there is n there's almost no way it would get there without it actually disbanding along the way or them just running off, uh, which sounds a bit crazy really, but, you know, that's that's the way it goes. Also, because you have to produce the armaments, you have to produce the men, if you don't have a settlement that can support the, the number of troops that you need, 150, then uh, which usually isn't a problem, but uh, then that's a bit of a pain as well. And if you've got a leader, and you can't really move leaders around. I mean, you can kind of put them, make them part of a new 
army and just kind of, but with no one in it and just kind of move them that way. But if if you have like an army over one side of Scotland, but you can't invade anyone because you don't have a leader, and leaders are fairly scarce, then you you know joining them up is quite uh, a tricky tricky process. You can't kind of reassign a, a leader easily to to another settlement. And as said before, without leaders you can't attack other other clans and stuff. Now all the scouting and the spy modes work well, as does the relations mode, as I said before. You can send gifts to other um, other clans. You can. There are a lot more diplomatic options basically than Shogun Total War. The music, I'll just say, they have this one tune and it's great, but it literally repeats. It's on a loop. It's it's. Well, if if you're not me, then you'll probably go insane listening to it and as i said i cut this game quite a bit slack cuz i you know i love the film it's um it's an interesting time period but you know i'm not going to i'm not going to sugarcoat this so here's a demonstration of the battles and forget formations forget tactics this is basically a scrum this is what this game is about you send your 150 men against their 150 men or so and whoever whoever is better wins basically now the slight difference is that, well, if you've got archers, just basically make your army two-thirds archers, make sure they're all trained up beforehand, which is a nice difference, you can train them before you send them into battle, and make sure they're at the elite level, just start picking them off. The enemy AI is so bad that basically they will stand there getting shot at, and they won't do anything about it till basically they've only got like, you know, 20 or so men left, by which time they run at you, but they're basically ready to surrender like this. I mean, this is the next shot you'll kind of see, just me picking them off with uh, with archers and things. There's no speed um, control like in Shogun, but you don't really need it, uh, because it, most battles are over within a few minutes anyway, which is, uh, which is pretty good. That's a, a positive in a sense. But because there's so many settlements, you know, this is a really, really long game, and you won't really bring yourself to actually complete it. I've I've never completed this game as many times as I've, as I've tried to give it the benefit of the doubt and most people who you know don't like Braveheart or don't like this period or just have played other decent strategy games since then you will not cut it the same slack that I do and hence the score I give it at the end. So really this game has some really nice features in its sort of non-battle mode setting but at the same time you know what I've got I've got to be honest this game where it matters fails in the battles the enemy AI, AI is just um, well it's basically non-existent it ends up like a scrum like this yeah the 3D settings of for its time were okay they weren't great for this time let's be honest this isn't like one of these things that you know it was classic then and now isn't it, it wasn't even classic then you know it all the clans always your clan is always represented by these yellow men the enemy are always grey there's no real difference it's a sloppy affair it's no shogun total war and yet at the same time uh, as shown here at the same time you there were some nice elements to this game it was just such a shame that they couldn't get the battles right and you can't really play just auto calcing the battles either because you 90% of the time lose so you can't even play in that that way just negating the battles so in the end I've got to give this game a low score 3.8 out of 10 and that's me